Yo, what's going on, everybody? Well, oh, it's finally here. The all, the moment you've been all been waiting for. I try to avoid these dumb dwarf movies for a very long time. Besides, the Dragon's Lair games, Space Ace games, and that's pretty much it. Someday I'll talk about the Land Before Time trilogy movies, but I will talk about the other American Tale movies. So I'm going to talk about the first one. I don't usually talk about the dumber movies at all. Despite the second one, but have nothing to go with Dumbler's true animation of the Goddess of Animation. It's been such a long time since I had to talk about Dumbler movies. I haven't talked about all Dogs Go to Heaven trilogy yet. Believe me, there's like three movies in a TV show. Yeah, I'm not kidding. There's an All Dogs Go to Heaven TV show. Google it. Anyways, I had to have a haircut here and there. And I had a bit of shaving. And doing other things besides playing video games all the time. I'm finally going to talk about American Tale, the first film. I'm in 1986, where it all started. And yes, I'm aware that Don DeLee's already kicked the bucket a long time ago. Oh, in May something, 2009. But I haven't done any movies with him for a long time. Besides... The Magic Voyage. I did in the last channel, Dorothy Martinez. Look it up. Anyways, here we go. Now this movie, I used to watch this a lot as a kid. This film is still treasured this very day that there, there's these um, Russian mice. And the youngest of the group is our favorite cold star, Five Maskowitz. Yeah, these are Russian mice that live in Moscow in 1885, which feels like a coincidence of the reference of Back to the Future in 1985, which I'll get to another time. That Papa Moskowitz himself explores things back, sorry about the horse-sized mouse creature. Or that's enormous to scare all the cats, which is foreshadowing the moment that they'll go to America, aka New York City. And see that famous line? There are no cats in America until all the chaos happens in their own home. War goes on and oversized Moscow cats start attacking and try to eat innocent mice like them. Five old tries to escape. Well, basically try to scare all the cats and when you know it, this happens. It comes like a Tom and Jerry movie, which I'll get to another time. And somehow these cats make like roaring sounds. Anyhow, the movie is basically about them going to America, so there will be no cats there. And to cut to the chase, it's like this movie has musical numbers in it, and I don't want to get copyrighted by Universal. Oh, and I'm glad it's not a Disney movie. And they're, you know, they go to America, so they will no longer be eaten by a bunch of cats. In this film, Simon will get separated from his family. They're in the, the ship, right, where he throws away his hat. And he lies and throws it out there and gets stripped and delayed by the terrifying oceans. 
you thinking is the rest of the family thinking he died in the middle of the ocean, but right clearly there's a bottle there. And somehow it got on top of a statue of liberty and meets hopefully voiced by Christopher Plummer, R. I. P. that he's not around anymore, but he does a play a pretty good special character or bird. And cheers him up by singing the song Never Say Never, which is a catchy song, which I am not allowed to play at all. And we also get introduced by the main villain of this movie, Lauren T. Rat, and his assistant, this roach guy. That. Yeah, digit. And make him count all his money. And he hates who is all the cash. Luckily, the little pigeon lady helps him out and drives him behind. Or Five Old thinks he would trust Warren T. Rat, that he'll help him find his family, but only for extra 50 cents. And the coincidence that and his family's inside a And thinking this will be like a short movie, but no, whoa. Not to mention Nightmare Fuel. Yeah, let me get the job there. And meet another interesting character, Tony. Tony, which is another main character of the story. And he does appear in the second movie, Five of Ghost West, but just for a short cameo where he gets his own family. I get the love interest of Bridget. So basically, this movie is about a coincidence of five all missing his family and being in their close by, and horrible things keeps happening to him every each time. But he does have a close friend and, and Tony, to Pony, well, also appearing in the other parts of the movie trilogy is that he is a, the only close best friend he ever has. Just like he's a street punk. And has a huge crush on Bradget. And the disposal of the of those cats once and for all. It said there are cats there. And miss the family again. And they, we meet this other character named Honest John, who's a um, rich guy. And there's a dead mouse there. You know, for kids. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, her. Kelsey Mouseheimer. And these are the only characters we get to see in the first film, and never again in the other sequels. Yeah, for a kids movie, it shows some characters that die in the most horrible way possible. Anyhow, the basic plot of this movie of them is trying to figure out how to get rid of the cats. But thanks to Final Maskowitz, which is him. And there's that awesome song, Somewhere Out There. Or, which I'll also not play. I mean, the film is basically of him getting his night with his family, but all kinds of stuff keeps happening, and not noticing that he's there the whole time. This will be a short film. He gets them ideas what to do, and he have a plan, and then ends up in an abandoned factory and use all parts. This is pretty much where the movie gets pretty interesting of all these amazing things happening. Five of them mistakenly thinks he says Papa's down in the sewer playing the violin. 
being chased by oversized roaches and big fish thing. Which turns out to be Warranty Rat, who's actually a cat. Oh yeah, and there's Tiger, voiced by Dumb Dillies, who's actually a friendly cat. Oh, sorry. Spoiler alert, if those of you who haven't seen this movie in a long time. Plus, he's a vegetarian. And we end up in an awesome chase scene of them chasing five old masculines. And pretty much like the coolest part of them in their outfits. They tried to chase after him, but they actually succeeded catching him. And they explain about the plan and get rid of the cats and send them all to China or Hong Kong. And then they do it earlier, or time ever. Survival mates, Tiger, that he's not as mean as the other cats, but he does say mean. And he also means it. This is his family, too. You know, he said he's a vegetarian. I eat fish. And there's this awesome song called That's What Friends Are For. It's a pretty good catchy tune song as well. We used to play this a lot more on YouTube. And we used to cut to a chase, find a little skate things a tiger and warn some about the cats. And at least a secret weapon. And five will explain that our team rat is not what he's supposed to be. And they have to wait until the timer goes off. And thanks to Tony, he with his amazing swing shot, reveals himself as a real cat. They take it pretty well. And he's about to burn the place up. And the timer runs off, and they release the secret weapon at once. It turns out to be the giant green mask of mint and use fireworks and weapons to scare the cats away and get rid of them for good. And it's a heck of a finale. He defeats all those cats once and for all. And there are no longer cats in America except for Tiger. But all you think it was going to be a could happily ever after, right? Or Fimo actually torches a Ralph to release a skirt weapon. Think again. Fire are sent place. And luckily the fire fire show up to put out well the fire. While it's happening, Tony and Bridget and the others try to find where Fimo's at. And his family. We were there too. Such a young time, yeah. Actually, you know that the same word as family is actually five all. But now they realize that's there. And the movie was. I feel like I will never see his family again, which is downright depressing. But luckily the film does come to an end with a happy ending that he's finally reunited with his family. And Tony gets the love he needs. And a real mouse. And that was American Tail. 
Well, I'm glad you people are still around to see me talk about the whole movie for like 15 minutes, actually. That was actually the quickest time, yes. And hopefully I'll get blocked by the internet for me to show in front of the film. The film is actually not bad. It's still pretty good. It's really a yeah, great film. After a few of its trilogies. For those of you who did not know, there's actually the 5 Ghost to West TV show. I don't remember hearing them say the word goodbye. Anyways, um, the anime stand still looks incredibly good. It looks really interesting. Voice acting is still brilliant. Music sounds unique. Backgrounds and arts. Heard of most likely everybody's favorite film of all time. I finally would not talk about this film in a long time, but I finally get to talk about another Don Blurf movie. That's everybody's favorite film. I'm sure this movie has like a few problems, like Every time in five will goes here and there, he messes his family just at the right mark there and finally in the end of the film he reunites with them. But then again this movie is only like an hour and twenty one minutes. This will be a short film. It does have great songs. It has Interesting in story plot. Yeah. Every time he talks, Oxy kills the mood. So, yeah, the film is still interesting nonetheless. American Tale is everybody's favorite film. I'll give Don Blur. Some credit, this is actually a pretty brilliant one by Steven Spielberg. As a kid, I really felt sad for this poor little mouse rival that wants to reunite with his family that got separated from the ocean. And you just want him to succeed and reunite with his family. But he does in the end of the film, which is good. But it does happen again in the sequel, Final Goes West, but it doesn't last that long. But still, this is a worthy film, worth checking out. And you want to see this cute little heroic mouse. I was trying to make it all this way toward America. Uh, and out with evil cats, except for one named Tiger. Or, or a mouse and a cat can be the closest best friends ever. So American Tale, the film, deserves a lot of credit being one of Dumbledore's greatest films of all time. So I give it a solid 8.9 out of 10. Everybody's most favorite film of all time. And I'm finally he put out the rest of talk about this film for like nearly 19 minutes. And that's why I showed old scenes of it for 15 whole minutes. I mean, isn't Bible like in the age of 7 or 8? Just like he's younger. And so was his sister. And yes, I'm aware that the actors that play them are no longer around, but they still hold up pretty well. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you all next time. I will talk about future dumb blurf movies and the spectacular characters of all time. The sequel will be next soon as possible.